Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. This week is Farm Safety Week and Francis Blige joins us to identify risks associated with key tasks on dairy farms and tips and advice to maintain a safe working environment. This time of the year is, 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 is one of the most dangerous times, July and August. It's, it's a high, I suppose, activity time of the year on, on all farms and especially on dairy farms. So it's a time when, when farmers very much need to kind of maintain their focus on safety. Um, this year so far, we've, unfortunately, we've had three fatalities, which is much reduced on, on, on other years. But we need to maintain our focus. We need to keep that number low. And unfortunately for those three families, you know, you know, it's, 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 it's no solace for those, um, but we need to kind of maintain. So, you know, the big areas I suppose that we see that we'd be focusing on for farmers really would be, many farmers I suppose are taking away the bull, but other farmers are thinking about calving cows um, that might be autumn calving. So really what we're saying here is, you know, if you're, if you're calving, uh, starting to prepare, I suppose, for calving, for autumn, autumn calving, for an autumn calving herd, it's largely a matter of, of how you're going to do it, how you're managing it. Um, if you're calving out in the paddock, you know, how are you managing that situation? Um, when you're getting out there, like if you're checking cows tonight, what's your route like? Is it clear? You know, uh, are you telling someone that you're going? Are you bringing, making sure that you have, have, have a light with you? Then when you're there, you know, if a cow is calving, how do you manage that situation? You know, are you taking away the calf? And, how do you go about doing that? Like, have you facilities there to do it, or do you bring the cow and calf in, into the yard to, to separate them? It's very, very important to make sure that, you know, when that cow um, has calved and you're trying to separate that calf, it's making sure that you have the calf between yourself and the cow, and that you have some kind of equipment there to make sure there's a physical barrier between you and the cow, because cows can be, um, can be aggressive. It's not just silk cows that are causing accidents. You know, every cow has the potential to be. Uh, to be a killer. So, you know, th- that's very, very important to remember. And obviously having a place to put cows where they need, when they need assistance. You don't want to be wandering around the paddock after them. And uh, you need to have, a, have, have, have facilities there to put them in if they need assistance and make sure that the job is, is structured and controlled. I think that's a great point, uh, Francis. And, you know, when you, you mentioned it, it's autumn calving we're thinking about right now. And the reality is, you know, when we think about calving, it is a time that people are fatigued. Uh, so it is important just to, I suppose, remind ourselves to remain alert. A- another point you make is the bull, you know, the, the bull is still in on certain farms uh, right now. And this is this coincides with a time where there's a lack of activity um, across the dairy cow herd, you know, assuming the majority of cows are in calf. And, you know, I suppose with the lack of activity can come maybe a little bit of crankiness or aggression in bulls. And it's maybe something also that people need to be vigilant of. Looking then to tractor work, Francis, what sort of tasks do you see as as the risky um, uh, machinery jobs that are happening on farms right now? For a lot of farmers, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really moving into, some of them are trying to kind of, I suppose, conserve a bit of hay if they're, if they're lucky enough, the weather comes, and others then are, you know, getting into the, the second cut silage. And really, I suppose, the, the questions really I'd ask there for a lot of farmers is that, you know, um, is there space for that extra silage? You know, are you going to, I suppose, you need to look at the, the quantity of grass that you expect to come in. Hopefully the, the, um, the volumes will be a bit, a bit more in the second cut for a lot of farmers. And have your facilities there for them? Are you going to be forcing your contractor to go higher um, and to get that silage in? And maybe, you know, to consider taking a few, a few of the fields out as, as bale silage just to take the pressure off. I suppose some of the pointers that we would have there, you know, for farmers to think about is that, you know, when that silage pit is put in, you know, the silage pit, um, being rolled should never be more than double the height of the, of the retaining walls. So you should never go over twice the height of the, of the retaining walls. You know, you need to have that 45 degree um, slope on the sides of the pit. So from the, back, from the back and on the sides and on the front. Where the clamp is being built with no retaining walls, that's still 45 degrees needs to be in, in place so that it's, it's, it's safe for the operator to, to manage. So obviously when you're going at 45 degrees, you can get to a point uh, in the middle of the pit quite, quite quickly. 
So, you know, the, the, the message there is that, it, you know, across the top of the pit, it needs to be three times the width of the loader or the, the implement that's putting up the silage. So three times the width of, of, that, of, the, of that loader needs to be in place for it to be safe operation. And, and those guidelines are there from, you know, the, the tractors and the Health and Safety Authority. Do you see uh, dairy farmers going out with slurry on that um, second cut silage ground? And, and if so, you know, what are your tips around that, Francis? Well, definitely, you know, to try and keep the grass growing and where, this, where there is slurry available uh, or still to be spread, you know, farmers are going to take the opportunity to get that slurry out. And, you know, sometimes that slurry can be there for a long period of months that hasn't been disturbed. And sometimes a crust can form on the top of it. So it's very, very important, you know, that, you know, that people think about the job, not just rush in if contractors are coming, you know, or you're going to do the job yourself. It's important that everyone in the house knows, first of all, that you're going to go, go at slurry. Uh, and before you start, you know, put, put the pet in. Sometimes, you know, pets end up down in tanks and, and that's not a good situation. So you need to manage that. Um, and what I would say is, you know, the main points there are, Look at the weather, make sure it's a kind of breezy day so that there's a little bit of air movement to take away any gas that might, might arise. Um, make sure all the doors are open. Make sure all, all animals are taken away from the, from the sheds that you're going to, to, to agitate the slurry in. Make sure that there's no animals wandering around the, around the yard or any individuals that, you know, that, that children are, 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 are supervised and stay, stay away from the yard. Um, when you put in that agitator, make sure you don't go near uh, into the shed or around the agitating point for the first 40 minutes. So the reason for that, obviously, is to allow the agitator to work, to break the slurry up, to allow them pockets of gas to, to, um, to break up and for the, for the gas to dispel. So generally that takes 40 minutes, but like largely it's a matter of staying outside the shed for as long as, as possible. Let that, that take, take place. I would say also, you know, we're going towards more um, trail and shoe and dribble bar type tankers. Um, those tankers are generally, generally larger. So the first thing I'd say is make sure the tractor is appropriate to it if you're using it yourself, if you're thinking about buying or if you bought one. If you're working on slopes, you need to be an experienced operator because because the, the point of balance or the, the, the center of gravity of those tankers are, lar- are, are quite high. And sometimes when the load comes off, they're more dangerous than when the load is on them as regards the, the, the weight that's on the, the back axle of the tractor can be lessened and can, stability can be reduced. Um, so, it, you know, those type of things are things to think about. And really it's about thinking about a, a risk assessment of, of the job you're doing and make sure you try and make it as safe as possible. So as part of the task of agitating slurry and spreading slurry, you have mentioned, you know, the, the, to be aware of children around the, the farmyard and around the, the family farm. Um, this is something that we have discussed previously in relation to, you know, you know, children uh, on their, their holidays from school uh, for the last few weeks and, and for the next, next six weeks or so. And they also have a huge interest in the operations on farms day to day, be it animals or machinery. Can you give us your recommendations, Francis, in terms of integrating children um, into the farm, nourishing their interest in the farm while protecting them against danger? Yes, and Louise, it's, it's every farmer's you know, dream, really, when their children are interested in, in the farm and, and how the farm works and I would very much be, you know, encourage farmers to bring their children down to the farm and show them how everything happens and how everything works. But it's very, very important when they're down there that, you know, they're properly supervised. It's very easy to get distracted by, by jobs that, that arise suddenly, maybe, um, and your, eyes are, your, in, your, your awareness is taken away from the child and sometimes they can get, can get themselves in danger. Obviously, as children get older, it's, it's very important to integrate them into various tasks and, um, you know, that are age appropriate for them to do. And it, it really does cultivate their interest. And it's very important to have conversations with them about um, the jobs they're doing, why they're doing them, how they're doing them and how they can be done safely and the risks that are involved in them. Looking then uh, to something that springs to mind for me, Francis, um, you know, we've had on the majority of farms, we see 
their spring calving from a dairy perspective. You know, a very busy calving period, very busy breeding season and uh, first cut silage done and, and second cut silage will be wrapped up in the next few weeks. You know, there's a lot of jobs and particularly maintenance type work that slides for the last six months and, and it's focused on from now on this time of year on. You know, what do you see as key maintenance that needs to be done on dairy farms that people might consider putting into the calendar from now on? Yeah, I, I very much agree with you, Emma Louise. You know, the last couple of months for on every farm has been very, very busy. Um, and what the first thing I'd say is for a lot of farmers is to try and plan a little bit of time off uh, and get away from the farm and relax and rest, um, you know, you know that's the main priority. You know, not to not to have a burn burnout situation arise, um, to to get that time away when it's possible. But as you say, I would also encourage farmers to take kind of a purposeful walk around the farm and, you know, take a pen and paper with them and or maybe their phone and take a picture or write down somewhere the various jobs that need to be done from a maintenance point of view. So what am I talking about there? I'm really talking about small things. You know, like maybe a hole or a crack in the yard in the concrete that needs to be repaired that maybe you're traveling, walking over and back a lot but never do anything about. Maybe damaged gates that need to be repaired or replaced or, or hung. You know, lighting that's not, you know, working correctly or maybe places that are in the yard that are dark that need to be lit up a bit better. Um, maybe slippy areas where you find cows are, are kind of slipping a bit. Maybe trying to get those grooves. Um, Fencing, you know, or a pair of fencing, putting in maybe a few extra, a few new strain and posts or, or, or posts where they're broken or, you know, that they're maybe gone rotten. Gutters, loose sheeting. You know, all those are things that, like, are, are there. But we need to write them down. We need to make things happen. And, like, it takes a bit of time maybe to get an electrician to come in and do, do a little bit of wiring or put up a light. It won't happen overnight. So, you know, you could plan it now, make a phone call and it mightn't happen for you know, another two or three months. So that's really what we're saying. Just, to, you know, purposeful plan there for that type of work. Today marks the start of Farm Safety Week, Francis. Um, you know, thinking about the, the Farm Safety Week and, and how it is relevant to dairy farmers. Can you talk us through what's involved in the week and what we can learn from it? Yeah, so F Farm Safety Week, Emma Louise, is, is largely uh, an initiative that is there to try and create awareness about farm safety and the importance of it. It's from the 19th to the 23rd of July. And it is five days there of themed practical advice and guidance on, on farm safety. It's a collaborative campaign. Um, it's initiated by the Farm Safety Partnership in the UK. The IFA in Ireland leads the, lead the, the, the initiative across, across Ireland and other countries involved are Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and Britain. Um, the overall title this year is Rethink Risk, um, and there is five days there of, of practical, I suppose, um, messages that, that are there for farmers to, to try and make the farm safer. Looking through some of the headline topics, uh, Tuesday, dying to get the job done. Can you tell us a little bit more? Dying to get the job done is, is, is Tuesday's theme, uh, Tired Risk Can Kill. So th that's the, the full title of it. Um, the main message here for farmers is to recognise the fact that, you know, we're not machines. Um, we must know and recognise that, you know, we have limitations. And what I would say is that, you know, we hear a lot at the moment about sustainable farms, and how sustainable they can be into the future. But you need to have a sustainable kind of workload there for the farmer, for them to be sustainable over time. You know, you want to be able to work into your, into retirement and still be in, in good, good health. Um, you need to enjoy your work. So if you're tired and you're forcing jobs and you're kind of constantly tumbling over your head trying to get jobs done, then it's, it's, you're at a higher risk of, of, of an accident and a higher risk of, 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 of an injury. Um, so really what the tips we're saying here for, for, for the Tuesday is that, you know, plan your work, identify jobs that can be really done by somebody else. If you feel, your, if you feel yourself getting tired, you feel, you know, if you, you're identifying that you're working a large number, a long number of hours every day, um, and that's not sustainable over time, you need, to take, you need to take stock and you need to do something different. You need to have time for breaks, you need to have plenty of sleep, you need to eat well, and if you have any health issues, you need to see your doctor. 
And I think, um, you know, if we reflect on the last two years um, and, and I suppose in particularly the first six months of the year, a, a, a common comment that you would hear from farmers is they were oversubscribed with help. So maybe they were in the situation where children were home from college during the spring where they might not necessarily be at home. And, um, you know, there was a lot of, I suppose, part time labor available locally, maybe people working in the city who were home during lockdowns. Um, you know, and that has added to, I suppose, an increased level of of help and a reduction in that tiredness. But I mean, you know, the expectation is that COVID-19 isn't something that will continue. So it's that, um, I suppose, longer term view on labor. And uh, as you say, putting a sustainable work plan in place, I suppose, on, on this particular topic as well, just to draw back to your comment on maintenance and and the farmer taking a break like this is a prime time of the year to consider taking that week or two off the farm to recharge your batteries moving on then to wednesday um we're looking at does not cost the earth but may cost your life so again what do we expect to hear here francis yes it's the messages here emma louise are, are really that we need to maybe identify every farm is different. Our own farm, we have certain issues on our farm that you know we know we need to to work on, um, and they sometimes don't call, don't cost a lot of money to to kind of correct or improve. And really, it's back to that plan that we were talking about earlier. It's kind of identifying the areas that are important um, from a safety point of view and, and make them happen. So, like one of the things that's coming to my mind really is that. You know, you go out every so often regularly and you clean the windows of the tractor and you clean the mirrors and you clean the floor of the tractor. Um, you know, that, there's a plan, there's an intention in the morning to do that. You need to allocate time for it. And it isn't always something that farmers do. It doesn't cost an awful lot of money, but it can make things like, like you know, it can make the situation safer, um, you know, if you're able to, if your visibility is, is improved. Um, you, you know, you're you're really looking for things that, that kind of are important to be done, but are left on the long finger. Um, you know, sunscreen, at the moment, the weather is good. You know, it's very important to have that um, bottle of sunscreen available to use. You know, if you're going out in the morning, the morning might be fine, um, but it might be cloudy. But as the day gets brighter, um, you can, so the, the sun can come out and you can have an issue. So it's important to have that sunscreen available. Um, you know, time, the tools you need for different jobs, you know, taking the time to go back to the yard to, to get the right tool uh, rather than trying to compromise on using tools that you have maybe available with you. So it's all about kind of thinking about the jobs that you can do and how you do them um, and the behavior and the culture that's there in relation to making sure you're doing it safe rather than trying to do it um, and maybe compromising your own safety. And some some really good points there, um, Francis. And the, the the sun sun cream one is you know so simple, but probably something that a lot of farmers are lacking. We will actually hear next week from uh, somebody from the Irish Cancer Society, a Barbara Grog- McGrogan. So, um, looking then to Thursday, protect the public. Yeah. So Emma Louise, like this one for me is kind of um, so a lot of the things that I'll talk about here are are things that the farmer will know and all farmer will know, but what are we doing about them? You know, can we honestly say we're doing something um, about them to make sure that, that um, the public is protected? So some of them, obviously, we're doing a lot about maybe the fencing, making sure that fences are appropriate for the livestock so that livestock can't get out on the road. You know, you know when you think about it, you know, our fields are intertwined or with, you know, public houses, buildings, you know, some of them are in close to towns. So we have a, a responsibility to there to make sure that our fences are appropriate and, and that the livestock stay where they're supposed to. Um, the other point I, I, I'd make there is, you know, uh, trees along public roads. Have we taken the time to look at them? Um, have we t- are, are we sure that they're not decaying or rotten or that branches are, 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 are decaying or rotten? Are, are we sure that they're not going to cause, a, you know, an injury? or, you know, affect the safety of the public. And if you have any, you know, if you have any concerns, it's important to get one in that knows what to look for and how to look for in those trees and that can assess them for you. And if they do need to be taken down for safety reasons, then you need to employ appropriate people to do that, especially along the the, uh, the public road. Um, also, I'd say maybe loose sheeting, you know, we, there's a lot of 
I suppose, older buildings along the edges of roads where loose sheeting, you know, you can see it flapping maybe in, in small, a small amount of wind. And on windy days, though, that sheeting can travel long distances at high speed and force and can cause a serious injury. So really it's a matter of, of taking time to go to those buildings, either secure the, the, the sheeting uh, or remove it um, and, and make sure that those buildings are, are, are safe. So really what we're saying here is to think about the public in jobs that you do. Small things like cleaning up maybe clay or debris off the road after maybe sided or slurry or, or jobs that you're trying to do. Uh, and, and if you're walking animals on the road, make sure that it's a good plan in place and that you don't cause uh, you know, any risk to any, any of the public that are on the road. Um, so those are maybe things just to think about. Again, it's back to assessing the risk and trying to manage that risk. And finally, Francis, then, you know, focusing on the, the, the people behind farms on Friday, uh, the topic, your health, your safety, your choice. So, so Friday is really kind of bringing it all together in relation to that farmer focus of thinking about risk. And really, it's thinking about the risk to yourself as a farmer. So like the research is telling us that, you know, farmers have, have seven times higher heart vascular disease, five times greater causes of death and three times greater causes of cancer, even though we think as farmers we're healthy. So obviously, you know, you know, the way we farm and how we farm has improved from a mechanization point of view. We may not be getting as much um, uh, exercise as we, as our as previous generations have had. So that means we need to, we need to schedule exercise for ourselves or else, or other than that, we kind of, um, you know, do farming tasks with a little bit more energy in relation to walking and walking pace and distance. Um, you know, we think about it and we always think about diet. What are we eating? When are we eating? Uh, are we eating well? And, and is the diet we have, is it, a, is it potentially having an effect on us, you know, on, on, and on our health? Um, you know, other things that I, I would focus on here and under this category is kind of stress in farming and the pressures of farming. And the importance, I suppose, here of talking to each other as farmers, um, taking up that phone and making phone calls. If there's, if, there's, if there's issues or if there's something that you have in your mind that's causing you a little bit of stress, it's important to talk to someone about it. You know, talk to your advisor about any issues that might be causing stress to you on the farm. If there's stress from a health point of view, talk to your GP. You know, there's a large amount of different organizations out there that can help. Um, and, and, and your advisor would be able to advise you on all those individual organizations as well. So, you know, take, take I suppose, stock and think about yourself uh, is, is what I'd be really saying over that message about your safety, your choice, your health, your safety, your choice. And a point you made earlier um, that probably fits into this category nicely, too, is, is sleep and, and, and how important sleep is for our health. Um, I think um, you've made some really, really interesting points there and they come up time and time again within discussion group settings. And also, um, you know, when, when we catch up, um, the discussion group, just to bring it back to that, discussion groups are getting back in person now, which probably offers, um, you know, a great, a great social outlet for farmers. And it, I suppose, it takes away from some of the loneliness that farmers experienced, um, I suppose, loneliness and isolation during um, the lockdown periods. Um, I think that farmers um, are big offenders for putting work first as opposed to their health. And they'll put um, the the health of their stock and maybe their their family um, before themselves. And from, from the points that you've made, like what I would say is it's important not to ignore any physical or or, or mental problems that you would have, you know, you know, whether it's stress um, or isolation. And you mentioned a, an array of people that are there to help farmers. Uh, interestingly, if you look at the risk assessment, um, so, the, you know, the risk ass assessment safety statement that that people do for farms, you know, one of the, the, the boxes that needs to be ticked is whether yes or no, do you um, visit the, the GP annually? And, and that's probably something that needs to become part of people's systems that, 
you know, once a year you visit your GP for that general checkup. We take our car for an NCT. So why not, you know, look after yourself in the same manner? And also then if, if other health issues crop up at various times of the year, again, the GP is is the first port of call. And, and you, you mentioned all these other people that we can fall back on, our advisor, you know, our, our, our friend, farmer friends, you know, all in the exact same um, situation as yourself. So, yes, Emma Louise, I, I would very much agree with everything you've said. You've said there, you know, it's very important that, you know, us as farmers, we prioritize our health. Um, we see it as, as important and integral to the whole farm. If we're not in tip top shape uh, and we're not having those visits to the GP, not minding our mental health, not, you know, I suppose, you know, our, our nutritional health from a diet perspective, not getting exercise then, you know, our, our health can become compromised. And if our health is compromised, you know, it may mean that it'd be harder for us to do, do tasks on, on the farm and the farm uh, won't be as productive as it should be. So it's very, very important, you know, to, to, to look at it from, from all perspectives and, and, and mind yourself as a priority. Francis, where can we see more um, of the information that Chagas provide in relation to safety on farms and personal health? So, as you said, um, you know, with, with COVID, uh, we're starting to have more meetings, um, but they are still on a limited basis, you know, to, you know, due to the restrictions. We have a large amount of, of information on the, the Chagas website. Uh, we will be releasing a large amount of, of, of uh, articles and videos over the week, over this, this week. Um, and I'd also encourage you to make contact with your advisor and your local office. You know, your advisor will have a large amount of, of, of information and, uh, you know, specific details that might be specific to your farm that might be, you know, they're using the knowledge that they have of your farm to help you. Uh, so I would very much encourage you to talk to your advisor about health and safety. That's great. Thank you, Francis. Thanks very much, Emma Louise. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Francis Bly for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.